Hello everyone, it's Jacqueline April, and today I am going to do a study on, or we are going to do together a study on the parable of the sower. Um, this was part of my notes that I have from class, and rather than just read the notes, um, because it's not making a whole lot of sense, I thought we would just um, take what our professor was talking about in, the, in class that day and go ahead and just do a study on it. So um, this is in Mark 4. So this is about the parable of the sower and then also the four soils that are talked about in that scripture. So here in a second, once I get situated, I am going to read Mark 4, 1 through 20. Let's see. So to introduce the parable, um, this is a parable. It's a short, uh, a parable is, start there, a short and simple story. Let's pull this down a little bit. It's a short, simple story that illustrates a moral or spiritual lesson. Uh, parables are a key part of Jesus' teaching method, allowing him to communicate profound truths in a way that was accessible and memorable to his listeners. So, let's read Mark 4, 1 through 20. Where did I put my glasses? So today I am using the New American Standard Edition um, Red Letter Red Letter references. So the red letters are Jesus' words. So most of most of this um, between one and twenty is all Jesus' words. In fact, from verse three all the way to verse thirty is Jesus' words. So, okay, parable of the sower and the soils. He began to teach again by the sea, and such a very large crowd gathered to him that he got into a boat in the sea and sat down, and the whole crowd was by the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables and was saying to them in his teaching. Um, so let me set this up real quick first. Um, in this parable, Jesus is teaching a large crowd. He's by the Sea of Galilee. Um, he, he, wanted, he wanted to make sure everyone could hear him, so he got into a boat and he spoke from there. Um, while the pe people gathered along the shore. This setting highlights the importance of the message he was about to deliver. Jesus used everyday agricultural imagery familiar to his audience making the lesson relevant and understandable. So this parable teaches um, about how different people perceive and respond to the word of God. So the sower in the story spreads seeds of various types of so in, on various types of soil. And the results vary depending on the soil's condition. Each type of soil represents a different response to hearing God's words. Word. So, the sower is, is Jesus Christ or anyone that is giving a word or talking, trying to preach the word. And the seed is the word of God. So when we understand this parable, it helps us to reflect on our own hearts and how we respond to God's message. So the things we want to consider in this parable is um, the sower, the seed, and the four types of soil and what they each symbolize in our spiritual lives. Okay, so I am now at verse 3. This is Jesus' words. Listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depths of soil. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Other seeds fell into the good soil, and as they grew up and increased, they yielded a crop and produced thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. 
or at verse 9. And he was saying, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 10, As soon as he was alone, his followers, along with the twelve, began asking him about the parables. And he was saying to them, To you has to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God, but those who are outside get everything in parables, so that while seeing they may see and not perceive, and while hearing they may hear and not understand. Otherwise they might return and be forgiven. So then this verse 13 and on is the explanation, but I'm going to stop at 20. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown. And when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them. In a similar way, these are the ones on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no firm root in themselves, but are not, but are only temporary. Then, when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones on whom seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word, but the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And those are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil, and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. So, so our professor, let's see, I'll just read kind of a little bit of what our professor said. There's an emphasis on hearing. The Greek is akuo. And he's talking about chapter 4, verses 1 through 34. You see that word over and over again. The interpretation of the parable that Jesus gives, verses 3 through 9, and then verses 14 through 20. There are four types of soils. The soils represent people where the seed lands is critical. Um, so it depends on what type of person they are that determines the t soil that it's being put into. So I've said many times, you could say something to someone and they're not ready to receive it. So this is really a whole thing. Like Jesus will, you know, quote unquote, till the soil in people. And with, with God, everything is timing. It's all about timing with God. So he knows when the right times are for people. Um, you could say... You could say something to someone when they're ready, and it changes everything in their life. It changes everything. But if you say that same thing to them when they're not ready, then the soil is not right in them. It's not correct. So it doesn't fall on the right soil. So it's talking about one shallow soil where, yeah, it, it, it sprouts up and it it grows real quick, but then it withers away. So there's no there's no depth. It talks about another one where, yes, the person receives it with joy, but then when but then the root has not been established. So then when the trials of life come and all that, then they fall away. So we need to determine which soil we are. Um, the soil needs to be ready for the seed. The soil needs to be pure, tilled, you know, it needs to have all of those ingredients in it that it needs really to, to produce. And, and so that's why, you know, some people have an epiphany at, at, at 65 years old, you know, it's like all of a sudden, okay, like I get it now, like the time was right for them. And that's when God that's when God speaks to people and that's when God really does work in people's lives. He has to wait until they're ready. So let's look at the different type of soil. So we have the rocky ground. Um, so there's no root to endure in the face of persecution. If what you're doing doesn't take root, it won't last. So he, our professor was saying that the disciples were, were kind, some of the disciples were even um, kind of
kind of implicated here. Like um, each disciple is different. Some of them, some of them, this did happen to. Some of them did have rocky ground, thorny ground. Um, some of them had good soil. So uh, he was saying that some of the disciples start with effervescence, but then they are in flight by the end. You know, it all starts out great. It starts out wonderful, and we're all excited. But we can't last till the end. Um, they can't take the persecution or the pr pressure or the crucible. So our professor was talking about the crucible. It's like a crucible experience in your life. And if, if you can't handle that, you know, you have to be able to handle the crucible experiences in your life. That might be another video, but, um, but the soil has to be, uh, it has to be ready. So God, you know, he prunes us, he, he tills the soil, you know, he plants seeds. There's a lot of, of messages about planting seeds. So it's kind of like some people, all you can do is plant little seeds here and there. You can't really go in and just like, you know, take the, take the, um, the plow and start tilling and, and putting all this stuff on the soil and everything because they're not ready for that. You can only do small little seeds. But what God promises us with those seeds is that if we plant the seeds, he will water the seed and he will grow the seed in its time. So only God knows when someone is ready. I mean, unless they tell you, obviously. But we don't always know when people are ready, but God does. So, so our job is to plant the seeds in their hearts. And that is what we are tasked with. We don't know what kind of ground it's going to fall on. Now, if we, if we know that it's going to fall on bad ground, you know, then that's one thing. But <clears throat> our job mostly is to go ahead and plant the seeds. So then we have the thorny ground. Um, they hear, but then they let other desires of the world choke it out. The cares of the world, the age, the lure of wealth. Um, it's kind of like the rich man that didn't want to follow Jesus because he didn't want to leave all of his wealth behind, you know, so, so like I said, a lot of people can start out with all this enthusiasm, excitement, and then they can't follow through, and one of, one of the big things in, in Christianity that is taught is that it's one thing to start well, but it's another thing to finish well, and finishing well is actually more important. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't start well, but if you're growing and growing and growing and then you're going to finish well, that's got to be the goal that we keep in our sights that we don't want to let go of. We want to finish our race well. And so we have to pace ourselves. That's kind of how I do um, in my life. I have to pace myself with everything. If I don't pace myself, I'm going to, you know, burn out. And um, if we understand that starting well is not as important as, as, as finishing well, then we'll be okay with these little spurts that we have, you know, where we peter out or it didn't go well or, you know, we, we, we didn't grab on, we didn't keep grabbing on to that promise. You know, we let it go or, or we let doubt come in or whatever it is we do. But, it, but it's okay as long as you keep going to the point that you get momentum and then you want to finish well. It's kind of like falling off the horse. You know, they say you gotta get back on. So, so if the ground is rocky or thorny or whatever it is, that person is not going to want to try again. That person doesn't have the depth, the root is not growing to where they are going to be able to sustain for the long haul. Um, the good soil, they accept it and it bears fruit and they don't let it go. They don't let the enemy come in and take it. They don't let the enemy come in and steal it. Um, so that's one of the things that I've learned in my life. I've, I've learned this lesson um, in a very harsh way. 
from things being stolen from me a lot by the enemy. And so I know it sounds kooky to say it, but here it is right in the Bible. It says Satan. We use the word enemy to kind of make it sound a little bit less, you know, harsh. But the enemy does come. Satan comes and he tries to steal it. So anything good in your life that God gives you, I have learned you have to protect it. And I have not always protected it. I have not always protected the work, work that God's done in me. I've not always protected the work that God's done in my life. And I've lost a lot of things because of that, because it wasn't protected. I've lost relationships. I've lost um, friendships. I've lost, you know, I've lost wealth, riches. You know, I've lost a lot of things from the enemy stealing it. So one really good video would be on protecting on protecting what you have protecting what you have in your life not just material but your spiritual your emotional um you know the enemy steals anything he, he doesn't care if it's materials emotional spiritual whatever he'll steal all of it you know if we let him and our job is to not let him so we need to figure out what kind of soil we are so we can fix it you know, if, if, if we're thorny ground, then we've got some work to do. We, we have got to get those thorns out of there. You know, if we are shallow ground, then we need to go deeper. You know, we, there's, there's work that we all have to do on making our soil right for the seeds that God is sowing. Because he doesn't just sow one seed. He's not just the seed of salvation. And then that's it, and there's no more seeds. I mean, we have all the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We have all of the works that God does in our life. He's constantly sowing seeds. When we go to church, He's sowing seeds into our spirit, hoping that they will take root and that they will grow. And sometimes these things that, that grow were in a flash, and they look so beautiful, but then they die out because they were not in the right soil we don't want that so it's again looking inwardly looking into our hearts to know what is the soil of our soul what do i need to put in it do i need to fertilize what what do i need to do um for 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 god's goodness to be able to come out to be able to grow in me so, and then number four, he's saying is the ground along the way, Satan takes it away. Um, I don't think that's what they called it in here. I can't remember, but. So, he's saying we may have to anticipate the things that can go wrong and get in the way of proper cultivation. People run into systems and cultures contrary to what we are doing in the church. So, the church is kind of like uh, fighting an uphill battle because we're trying to go against the culture. The culture is telling us one thing. Everything we hear out there is one thing. And then what God is telling us what, through the church is a whole different thing. So it's kind of, it, it, it's, it's always gonna be that battle. Um, and that's the battle between, you know, um, be between um, your flesh and your spirit, right? The flesh wants all of this. And da da da, and we want to go with the culture, and we want to go with what looks good, and all of that. But we have to, you know, we have to get to a point where we just stop ourselves and know that all we need is whatever um, God is going to give us, whatever God has for us. And we don't need anything else than that. So um, he's this he's. Okay, I think I'm gonna end it there because this was this was just day two. <laughs> um, but then he goes into another he goes into some of the healings and I don't want to include that in here. So okay, so let's see what else that we can talk about with this. Okay. So who is the sower? Um, the sower represents Jesus or anyone who spreads the message of God's word. Um, what does the sower represent? Um, symbolizes those who share the gospel, including pastors, evangelists, believers. The seed, 
the seed is the word of God. Um, the word of, you know, the Bible is the word of God, right? Um, and the message of the kingdom, the gospel. That's the seed that God is wanting to sow in each one of us. And each seed, he's sowing different seeds in different people. You know, this person needs more peace. This person needs more joy. This person needs this. That person needs that. And so um, we may be receiving it, but the soil still may not be where it needs to be. So we could have a, an epiphany one day, and a spiritual epiphany one day. We could have one, you know, two months later because of all the things that God is doing in us, working in us. Okay, so here we're, we're talking about the path. So Mark 4.15, the seed falls along the path that is quickly eaten by birds. And that represents the people who hear the word, but Satan immediately takes it away before it can take root in their hearts. So yeah, he may, so the enemy is watching to see what he can steal. So if he knows that you received a really good word on such and such, you know, let's say peace, and you really needed peace, and you received that word, and you heard it, it comes along immediately, usually like the next day, like it's quick. He, he tries to steal it right away, because he doesn't want that peace or whatever it is that you need to take root in your soul, in your heart, your spirit. Because if it takes root, then you're going to start believing more of the Word of God. He doesn't want that, right? So we have to believe that the spiritual world is real. I mean, the Bible is telling us the enemy comes to steal it. Um, so we need to have deep roots in our faith. How to develop the deep roots in our faith? That's by hearing the Word of God. You know, um, hearing sermons, reading the Word, studying the Word. Uh, I recently did a little video for Amazon because I became an Amazon, um, I got into the Amazon Influence Program. Not that I want to be selling a ton of products, but um, I think it would be really cool for any Christian products. Because um, that's what I'm about. You know, Bibles, journals, um, Bible study tools, things like that. Why did I bring that up? Because I was going to say something. Um, let's see. I forgot what I was going to say. But I did I did this video recently. Um, it wasn't very good. I was extremely tired that day. I really... But I knew that Prime Day was, was like coming up. And I had to get this done. And so I forced myself to do this video. And it just was not very good. I... I have to be a little bit more, not a little bit, a lot more, um, um, a, a lot more cognizant of kind of explaining things a lot um, short, making it a lot shorter, the explanations of the products, etc., and the Bibles. So that would take require a lot more preparation than what I prepared. I thought this was going to be easy, quick and easy thing. It's really not. So when you see those videos of people doing Amazon, you know, um, best Amazon products or whatever, those videos are not so easy because you've really got to know the product and it, it's just, it's a whole thing. So I'm, I hopefully will do it better another time, but I knew Amazon Prime Days were coming, so I was trying to do it for that. <clears throat> Okay, so the seed that falls on rocky ground, this is Mark 16 through 17, sprouts quick, quickly but withers under the sun due to the lack of roots. So this represents people who receive the word with joy but fall away when trouble comes. We talked about that. Um, so again, we need the deep roots in the faith. And then the thorns are Mark 18 through 19. The seed that, seed that falls among the thorns grows, but then it's choked out by the thorns and becomes unfruitful. So if you have uh, the soil in your, in your heart still has thorns kind of growing here and there, yeah, the seed might come in and fall, but then those thorns are going to choke it out. So the thorns are like sin and blockages to God and things like that. So this represents people who hear the word but are distracted by the cares of the world, wealth, and desires. Um, 
so worldly concerns can choke out your faith. So we have to learn to stay focused on our spiritual growth. And then the, the good soil, which is what we all want to have, we all want to strive for this good soil, is Mark 4, 20. The seed that falls on good soil produces a crop multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. So not only is that a good soil and the seed is going to be allowed to grow, it's going to multiply and probably put seeds, you know, produce seeds for other things. So these are people that hear the word, accept it, and produce a fruitful life. And I would say people that protect it from Satan trying to steal it. So we, we need to cultivate a fruitful spiritual life, a fruitful spiritual soil. So some, some questions um, to think about. What soil are you currently and why? How can we prepare our hearts to be more like the good soil? What are some practical steps to avoid the pitfalls of the other types of soil? So let's reflect on our lives, identify areas where we need to grow. And then um, maybe in the next video, we can suggest practical steps um, to cultivate good soil in our lives. Well, I mean, those would be uh, regular Bible reading, prayer, fellowship, going to church, you know, attending conferences, all of those things um, are what we're talking about here. So God does promise to be faithful in his work within us. Um, so there is a role of the hearer here. There is a role of the person that's receiving the seed has a role here. Um, and how they receive it and how they respond to God's word. So, so one of the big um, verses that would go with this is John 15 5 I am the vine you are the branches if you remain in me and I in you you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing so Jesus is promising us that if we remain in him we'll bear fruit it indicates a partnership between God's provision and our abiding in him the other scripture, so it's the work of the Holy Spirit, in this one, Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Uh, God knows that some of the seeds are going to be stolen or not, or, or, or discarded, or they're going to die. So he's going to continue to sow seed. If he sees that, that seed of peace that you needed it got choked out by the thorns, he's going to come and he's going to sow it in you again. If he sees that it, it was on shallow ground and it sprouted real quick and then fizzled out, he's going to try it again. So don't get in despair thinking that, well, God's going to give up and blah, blah, and he's not, you know, he's going to give up and he's not going to try to give you peace anymore. That's not really it. I mean, it, there is a verse that says God will only strive a certain time with us, but with sowing into our lives, I mean, I would say that he's going to do that until the day that we die, you know, pretty much. Um, there's another verse, and it's talking about the receptive hearts that we need to have. Um, others like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, produce a crop. Okay, that's what we just read a minute ago. Um, this highlights our, the importance of God's word and fruitful soil represents those who hear, accept, and act on God's word. So my prayer for you today is that you hear, accept, act on God's word, and protect the seeds that God plants in, our, in your heart. And don't let the enemy steal them. You guys take care and have a have have a good day have a <laughs> have a nice day i don't know where that came from but um take care and i'll see you in the next video